क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन कैलकुलेट नेट प्रॉफिट रेशियो फ्रॉम इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑफ क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव एंड सिक्स नो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फ्रॉम क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव विल कैलकुलेट आवर नेट प्रॉफिट फ्रॉम फॉलोइंग इन्फॉर्मेशन कैलकुलेट ऑपरेटिंग रेशियो विच इज नॉट दर इन योर कोर्स सो फ्रॉम दिस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विल कैलकुलेट नेट प्रॉफिट दैट इज सेल्स प्लस एनी अदर नॉन ऑपरेटिंग इनकम एंड माइनस ऑल दी एक्सपेंसिस sales plus non operating income that is income of interest dividend 645000 that is the total income now we will deduct expenses that is cost of goods sold 325000 then operating expenses 175000 financial expenses 85000 non operating expenses 35000 This is total expenses. Now, from total income, we will deduct total expenses. That is, twenty-five thousand is our profit before tax. From that, we will deduct our tax rate. So, we will get our profit after tax. Twenty-five thousand minus seven thousand five hundred. So, this is our profit after tax. Now, we will write in our formula that is net profit ratio is equal to profit after tax upon net sales into hundred. Now, net profit after tax is seventeen thousand five hundred. Divided by net sales, so net sales amount is six lakh into hundred. So here we get our net profit ratio as two point nine two percent. Same we will calculate from question number six. First sales, then non-operating income that is dividend received on investment. So we'll get our total income that is forty lakh. Now we'll deduct expenses. So cost of goods sold that is twenty-seven lakh. Then operating expense it is given three lakh. Financial expense that is given interest on loan sixty thousand. Non-operating expense that is lost due to accident forty thousand. So thirty-one lakh is our total expense. So from forty lakh we will deduct total expense. So nine lakh is our profit before tax. Now from this we'll deduct thirty percent tax, that is two lakh seventy thousand. So we'll get our profit after tax, which is six lakh thirty thousand. Now net profit ratio, that is profit after tax upon net sales into hundred. Now profit after tax is six lakh thirty thousand, and net sales is thirty nine lakh into hundred. So that is equal to sixteen point one five 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 percent. So net profit ratio is sixteen point one five percent. Question number eight. From the following information, calculate current ratio and liquid ratios. For this, first we need to calculate current asset, current liability, and liquid asset. Now, from this, we have to calculate first current asset and current liability. Now, first of all, we calculate current assets. So stock that is three lakh, debtors plus bills receiver minus bad debt reserve that is twenty thousand. So three lakh five thousand debtors that cash and cash equivalent one lakh twenty thousand and the expenses paid in advance is sixty thousand. So our total current asset is seven lakh eighty five thousand and current liability amount is bills payable plus creditors plus short term loan plus any outstanding expenses. So that is. Sixty thousand plus two lakh plus forty thousand plus fifty thousand, so three lakh fifty thousand is our current liability. Now we'll use it in our formula that is current ratio is equal to current asset upon current liability. So amount of current asset is seven lakh eighty five thousand, and current liability is three lakh fifty thousand. So that is equal to two point two four is to one. Now we'll calculate liquid asset, that is current asset minus stock minus expenses paid in advance. Liquid asset means we from that we have to exclude stock and any expense we have paid in advance or prepared expense. So seven lakh eighty five thousand is our current asset. From that stock and this expense paid in advance we will deduct. So our liquid asset is four lakh twenty five thousand. Now we'll calculate liquid ratio. So the formula is liquid asset upon current liabilities. Now liquid asset amount is four lakh twenty five 
थाउजेंड अपॉन करंट लाइबिलिटी सो करंट लाइबिलिटी अमाउंट इज थ्री लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड सो लिक्विड एसेट रेशियो इज वन पॉइंट टू वन इज टू वन क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टीन कैलकुलेट स्टॉक टर्न ओवर रेशियो फ्रॉम फ्रॉम द फॉलोइंग इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एल कंपनी लिमिटेड नाउ यर सेल्स क्लोजिंग स्टॉक ग्रॉस प्रॉफिट रेट ओपनिंग स्टॉक एंड परचेज इज गिविन सो वॉट इज अवर फॉर्मूला फॉर कैलकुलेटिंग स्टॉक टर्न ओवर रेशियो दैट इज कॉस्ट ऑफ गुड सोल्ड अपॉन एवरेज स्टॉक सो एवरेज स्टॉक वी कैन कैलकुलेट फ्रॉम ओपनिंग एंड क्लोजिंग स्टॉक एंड कॉस्ट ऑफ गुड सोल्स वी कैन कैलकुलेट सेल्स माइनस ग्रॉस प्रॉफिट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विल कैलकुलेट ओपनिंग स्टॉक प्लस क्लोजिंग स्टॉक सो दैट इज इक्वल टू थ्री लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड प्लस टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड डिवाइडेड बाय टू सो एवरेज स्टॉक इज रुपीज थ्री लैख नाउ कॉस्ट ऑफ गुड सोल्ड सो सेल्स अमाउंट इज रुपीज थर्टी लैख and from that we have to deduct the gross profit that is rate is given 30% so 30% of 30 lakh is rupees 9 lakh 30 lakh minus 9 lakh is 21 lakh now stock turnover ratio will calculate so the formula is cost of goods sold upon average stock cost of goods sold value is 21 lakh and average stock we calculated that is 3 lakh So twenty one lakh divided by three lakh that is equal to seven. So we can say that stock turnover ratio is seven times. Question number sixteen. Cost of goods sold will calculate. Here also we have to calculate stock turnover ratio. So opening stock that is amount is two lakh plus purchase twenty two lakh plus purchase expenses that is one lakh. Plus wages that is two lakh fifty thousand minus closing stock that is one lakh fifty thousand. Now we have to add all this amount and we have to deduct closing stock amount from it. So we'll get rupees twenty six lakh. So our cost of goods sold is twenty six lakh. Now average stock will calculate from opening stock and closing stock. So opening stock value is two lakh, and closing stock is one lakh fifty thousand divided by two. So that is three lakh fifty thousand divided by two. That is equal to is one lakh seventy five thousand. So one lakh seventy five thousand is our average stock. Now we'll calculate stock turnover ratio. That is cost of goods sold upon average. stock cost of goods sold is 26 lakh and average stock is 1 lakh 75000 so our stock turnover ratio is 14.85 times question number 17 we have to calculate working capital turnover ratio based on sales as well as based on cost of goods sold by two methods we have to calculate So first of all, we'll calculate sales amount. That is cost of goods sold plus gross profit, which is given to us in question. So cost of goods sold amount is thirty-two lakh, and gross profit is given eight lakh rupees. So our sales amount is rupees forty lakh. Now we'll calculate working capital. That is current asset minus current liability. So current asset amount is just given in question. Five lakh, and current liability it is given three lakh. So working capital is rupees two lakh. Now first of all we will calculate working capital turnover ratio on the basis of sales. So our sales amount is forty lakh. So formula is sales upon working capital. So sales value is forty lakh, and working capital is two lakh. Forty lakh divided by two lakh is twenty. So we can say that our working capital turnover on the basis of sales is twenty times. Whereas on the basis of cost of goods sold, so the formula is cost of goods sold upon working capital. Now cost of goods sold 
is 32 lakh which is given to us in question and 32 lakh divided by working capital that is 2 lakh so working capital turnover ratio is 16 times question number 18 we have to calculate data turnover ratio and collection period now first of all we will calculate average trade receivables so average trade receivables is opening data plus bills receivable plus closing data and bills receivable so the amount here is opening data 70,000 plus bills receivable 20,000 plus closing data 50,000 and plus bills receivable 6,000 so this is 90,000 plus 56,000 now here we have to find average trade receivable so it will be divided by 2 same way here so 90 plus 56 divided by 2 so they will get rupees 73,000 that is our average trade receivables now we will calculate data turnover ratio so credit sales upon average trade receivable now credit sale is given to us in question that is 3 lakh 65000 and average trade receivable is 73000 so that is equal to data turnover is 5 times now we'll calculate collection period so in days if you want to calculate so we'll 360 divided by data turnover is 5 so that is 72 days now if you want to calculate in number of weeks then 52 divided by data turnover that is 5 so 10.4 weeks and in months if you want to calculate so 12 divided by data turnover that is 5 so that is 2.4 months Question number 19 we have to calculate creditors turnover ratio. So first of all we will calculate credit purchase as it is not given in question. So credit purchase is total purchase minus cash purchase. Now total purchase is given to us that is 6 lakh minus cash purchase. So cash purchase is 2 lakh 40 thousand. So credit purchase amount is 3 lakh 60 thousand. Now we will calculate average trade payables. So average trade payables, opening writers plus bills payable plus closing writers plus bills payable. So here 40,000 plus 15,000 plus 40,000 plus 20,000 divide by 2 that is equal to 1 lakh 20 thousand divided by 2 so average trade payables is 60 thousand now credit turnover we will calculate that is credit purchase upon average trade payable so credit purchase amount is 3 lakh 60 thousand and average trade payables is 60 thousand so here we will write down 3 lakh 60 thousand divided by 60 thousand so our cater's turnover is 6 times. Now we will calculate the payment period in days. So that is 360 divided by cater's turnover which is 6. So cater's turnover in days is 60 days. In week if you want to calculate so that is 52 divided by cater's turnover so that is 6. So 52 divided by 6 that is 8.66 weeks we can say. And in number of months if you want to calculate so 12 divided by criteria turnover which is 6 so that is 2 months.